It's one of those days I woke up not pissed off at the world, so I'm going to recommend some frisbees to you guys. I'll start it off with this. If you don't have a Clash Discs Honey already on your wish list, we can no longer be friends. Okay, quote a hit. The end of a mystery is essentially the knockoff Wild Honey. I don't care if it was made first. Before you think of making a mystery pun, don't do it. I was worried even this would be crossing the line. Most of you can't go wrong with an understable driver, especially if you're bagging anything 12 speed or higher and not throwing over 400 feet. If you're right on the cusp of that distance but don't want to sound like a bitch to your friend saying you bag a turn, no offense. Check out the data list. You should hopefully get this disc to turn and fly somewhat far, but odds are you should be bagging a turn. If it works, bag it. Who cares what some loser who lives in his mom's basement says? And no, that's not me. I live upstairs. Also, I'm 22, so let's relax. You guys like drivers, so let's stay on this understable driver trend because maybe that will force you to pick good ones for once. The Latitude 64 Bolt is probably the only driver from their lineup you should be bagging. Jokes, of course, I don't need the Tatar simps after me. I hear all this nonsense about a grace, but I never saw the appeal. And most disc golfers that rave about this thing, I see throw the nastiest hyzers any other stable disc could do. Granted, I've never been blessed with the opportunity of throwing one myself. However, I can confidently say the ballista is, is most disc golfers' worst nightmare. Why? Because no one only throws the ballista. Just like Tinder, there's no reason not to get the pro. Keep swiping, fellas. She's out there somewhere. The Diamond, however, is a great understable driver that every disc golfer should be able to get turned over. If that's a problem for you, or you've been digging your Rolo but need more distance, check out the Diamond. It's a slower and more controllable Mamba, except you get better plastic. For the love of Disc Golf Jesus, please never try to tell me the river is a good disc. I will instantly stop listening to whatever follows that phrase. Sorry, that seemed really aggressive. It just happened to the person who hurt me's favorite frisbee. I always try to find a gyro disc to recommend, and every time I'm disappointed by MVP's options. This might be one of those times I convert my entire bag to see what the hell all the hype is about, but that just sounds icky. Holy shit, I forgot Axiom was a different brand. Technically, sorry, I just forgot they existed. The Crave is a great disc that's slow enough for every arm to manage. Perfect to hit small gaps and shape shots in the woods. Still a shitty cereal though. And to complement that, the insanity is anything but insane. Just a classic understable fairway. But it is insane that more people don't bag this disc as it fits most disc golfers game. Sorry again I asked you for forgetting about you. Can I have a time lapse now? The Berg sucks. Sorry, I just had to slip that one in. The Avenger SS has nothing to do with the Marvel superheroes, which is a bit disappointing because then maybe you would have a cooler disc. But alas, another understable distance driver from Discraft. I don't know why I say it like it's a bad thing because if I'm being honest, most of you out there need to make this disc your best friend. Not necessarily the Avenger SS, because then you'd just be another disc crap wannabe. I imagine most fans dress like a cop pretending to be a high schooler only throwing disc crap because it's what the cool kids are throwing. Instead, just fall in love with an understable distance driver, learn everything that it can do, and then buy 8 of them. I never understood the reasoning to have a bunch of molds in your bag. Personally, I try to keep my bag with as many duplicates as possible in different wear and tear. That being said, if it works for you, I support you. I always joke about how I used to bag 8 destroyers, which sounds incredibly stupid, but most of those discs had a different purpose. Don't believe me? Let's go back in time 3 years ago when I was just 19. Yeah, for those still wondering, I'm seriously only 22, so stop commenting that my takes are because I'm old. Granted, I've been playing for 8 years, which to most disc golfers is a lifetime, as we all know half of you came from COVID. To start, I had my max distance destroyers. These were the discs that if I was in an open field and needed a huck, I could launch one of those knowing it would never turn completely over for me, which I think is important for every bag out there. Pick out a disc you can trust to turn, but not as much that it won't ask back for a full flight. Then I had my overstable destroyers for any type of headwind. I could throw these identical to the ones before achieving the same flight. Or if I needed a disc to fade hard for me to the left with no worries of it ever turning, I was covered. If you noticed, I always had a duplicate in my bag, just in case things went wrong or I needed an extra shot off the tee. Again, I think it is important because if you ever lose a disc, you will have a backup ready to go, and if you do play tournaments, what are you going to do when you throw your precious disc in the water? No reason to be attached to these discs. Odds are they will end up in the pond one day anyway, and you'll be prepared for any situation. Okay, I know I said not to get attached to your discs, but I'm only saying that because I have a problem. I get way too attached to these pieces of plastic. The last destroyer that I still bag to this day is referred to as my baby. I've been bagging it since 2016, and it's been by my side since my grandma bought it for me for Christmas. The amount of awesome courses I've thrown this disc on is crazy. I'm talking Maple Hill, Harmony Benz, WR Jackson, Toboggan, Flip City, Winthrop Gold, New London, 
Brewster Ridge, Fox Run, The Gorge, Failure Lake, Lake Marshall, and so many more. But my favorite story is from Blue Ribbon Pines. Swiss cheese, yes, the one with all the holes in his game, and I went on a disc golf road trip to the wonderful state of Minnesota. There were a couple of dope courses we wanted to play, and after doing some research, we realized that the Minneapolis area is great for disc golf. So we packed our bags and headed there for a quick trip. I should also mention this was the summer of 2020, if that rings a bell to anyone. The first stop we made was a hidden gem of a course, or at least that's what I'm going to assume because it looked untouched for years. But that's the exact reason I loved Vision Quest, because it felt like we stumbled upon this secret disc golf course that had some of the coolest holes I've ever played. It also happened to be down the road from Blue Ribbon, which was Swiss and I's entire mission. So after round one, we got a sneak peek at BRP. It was pretty awesome to say the least. It felt like there were shots for everyone. Both of us felt equally challenged and rewarded for playing well on the course. Day two of the trip is what got me excited, because we got to play on the Airborne property a few weeks after the Preserve Championship, so we got to play some of the same holes as the pros. It was still split into the Lynx and Timberwolf layout. 36 holes, and trust me, every time I could makeshift the pro holes, I would. Later that day, we got a round in at one of the weirdest courses I've had the pleasure of playing. I don't know what the fuck these things are, but I'm not a fan, and my putters weren't either. But I was putting with fireflies, so honestly, they deserve to be beaten. Nothing screams look at me like $20 putters. If you need the wake-up call, just get the alpaca from Infinite. It's the same thing, but way cheaper. No more need to miss 15-footers with a putter that costs the same as a premium plastic distance driver, damn near with shipping included. The next day, Swiss and I played Kaposia, a fun course that ended up being the same one I qualified for the Collegiate National Championships. Shout out Wisconsin Whitewater. We then got a round in at the second best course in Minnesota, according to you just got the time. Still not sure if that's true, but I will say it might be the second prettiest course in Minnesota. Just don't make me tell you what number one is. On the final day, we played Blue Ribbon one more time. Swiss and I have a rule when we go on these disc golf road trips, whatever our main course is, we have to play two times. That's because we never wanted to walk away with the feeling of having to play a second round to redeem a hole or shot. We already had that covered. Even though I hadn't stopped thinking about my drive in hole 14 in the Lynx course in the Airborne property, we had to get one more in at BRP. Which would have been awesome, and it was, I will admit, but I only had to spend over an hour looking for the first zone I had ever purchased after no longer being sponsored by Innova. Maybe it was a sign. Oh yeah, and I never got it back. Then I threw my baby into the pond. See, there is a tie back. It was some of the grossest swamp looking water I have ever seen. Still, without question, I stripped down and jumped in that bitch. I was in there for over two hours, and if I didn't find that destroyer, I would still be in that damn pond. I pulled out over 30 discs, even someone's Excalibur who just happened to be playing through on that hole from a month ago. After seeing his upshot, I should have told him to throw it back, but still crazy experience to have. Thankfully, after a quick dip, I was able to secure my disc, only to be told the giant snapping turtle lives in there. Either way, I conquered that pond and haven't had a close call with my baby since. Have I thrown in any sort of risky hole since then? Absolutely not, but I would shed tears if I lost this thing. If you enjoyed the story times, make sure to drop a like because I have so many more disc golf stories just like this. I mean, I didn't even tell you about the part of having explosive diarrhea while playing BRP the first time. Yeah, that happened. So subscribe to not miss out on shit like that. Oh, and if you want to know what disc you and every other disc golfer should be bagging, check out the video right here.